Well, good afternoon. For those who don't know me, my name is Erin Lind, and I'm a 2001 grad and former student athlete here at SMSU. And I've had the pleasure of knowing Butch Raymond, our first inductee today, for about 15 years. I actually recall my first introduction to Butch when I was a 17-year-old high school student here on a recruiting visit when my former head coach, Kelly Kruger, introduced me to him. Butch served as my athletic director for four years at SMSU, and during that time, I began to realize what this future SMSU Hall of Honor inductee was made of. After graduating from SMSU, our paths crossed yet again when he made a much appreciated phone call and recommendation to help me get my foot in the door in the NSIC conference office, where I'm still employed today. Butch and I continued to work indirectly through the office when he was an AD, and if he hadn't had enough of me yet, he decided to take on the role as commissioner and become my boss. And I actually hope he retains my services after today. <laughs> <clears throat> when Butch asked me to be his presenter, I was reflecting on how I should approach his introduction. Knowing that he's a member of several Hall of Fames and other Hall of Honors, I tried to pinpoint what exactly makes someone worthy of this recognition. And after much consideration, I came up with four criteria. They are as follows. Number one, one must apparently qualify for an AARP card. <laughs> and yep, Butch does. Number two, one must have a closet full of sport coats and be willing to share reading glasses. These are for you, but just about anyone. Number three, one must achieve a high degree of accomplishment. During Butch's tenure at SMSU, he's l accomplished too many things that I could list, but he's indirectly touched so many lives, it's almost impossible to gauge the full impact of his legacy here at school. Some things he did do, like Aaron mentioned, he had additional athletic programs to the department, he was instrumental in increasing scholarship dollars, he started the first corporate partnership program, and he served as a very active role in the NCAA and Division II Men's Basketball Committee. And ultimately, the performance of an athletic director is gauged by their ability to foster an environment where success is a norm. The ability to give student athletes the proper guidance through coaching, first class facilities, equal opportunities, and the support of faculty and community. And I can say with confidence, Butch did those things. And then my fourth and final criteria, and most importantly, I think, it's not necessarily what a person has done, but it's who a person is. So who is Butch Raymond? Butch is a husband. A husband who's learned very well to take direction from a woman. Thank you, Linnea. It helps me every day in the office. He's a father and a, a grandfather. When chatting with his kids about the positive memories of SMSU, they all brought back homecoming parades in Marshall and how Grandpa Butch would never let a grandkid be shorted on time on the sideline or a chance to hang with Stung Stinger the Mustang. Butch is a leader in all areas of his life. He's a mentor to many, he's a boss, and he's a friend. Through my reflection on Butch, I've discovered that he is a true Hall of Honor inductee. With that being said, it is my privilege and my honor to introduce my boss and my friend, Mr. Butch Raymond. There's a classic example of why this institution is a number one liberal arts public school in the state of Minnesota and in the Midwest. Um, obviously, Erin, thank you very much, and uh, I wish I was her boss, but uh, that's not the way it works in our office, as you well know, same as at my house. So uh, <laughs> thank you very much. I want to, first of all, thank the committee for this honor. This is obviously, uh, those of us that are involved in athletics, it, uh, this is the top of the rock. This is what it's all about. And it's very much appreciative, and I, I want to thank you for that. I'd also like to congratulate the other inductees. It is, very honestly, kind of a humbling experience for me because those inductees, with the exception of Dick, have all played their way into the Hall of Honor. For me, I just worked with people, and, and they're the ones that put me in here because of all the things that they did. So congratulations to them. And Dick, obviously, you've earned it for everything you've done for this institution. And along even when I was here, I want to thank you for that. I've been in college athletics for 42 years, for 28 as a college basketball coach, seven as an athletic director here at Southwest Minnesota State, and now seven years as a commissioner. Had a lot of good things and difficult things happen, but always there was one group that had my back, uh, no matter what it was, and that was my family. 
And uh, I'd very quickly like to have you meet them. I'm just going to ask them to stand, but we'll hold their applause, otherwise it'll get too long. But again, uh, we could, I couldn't keep them away from being here today. That's the way that they are. So just going down the list, first of all, my wife, Linnea. Linnea, would you stand and stay standing, please? Uh, Linnea, leaving college coaching after 28 years and becoming an athletic director was a tough decision for me. But Linnea was extremely supportive and said she knew that deep down it was something I wanted to do and was so helpful in helping me adjust to that. With her, two of our grandkids, Garrett Zimmel and Lily Zimmel, my oldest daughter, Tracy, and her daughter, Abby, and her daughter, Ellie. She's missing a husband and a sixth grade uh, son. They are currently playing in a basketball tournament at Faribault. They won at 8 o'clock this morning. They're tipping it off again at 12.20. She's obviously texting, trying to find out what he's doing. Hopefully if he wins, he'll be playing at 6 and she can get back home for that. My middle daughter, Susie, and her wife, Dave. <laughs> her husband, Dave. It runs in the family. I just want to make sure, Dave, you know where you are. And, and their children, Emily, Josie, and Kelsey, my son Brad, his wife Amber, uh, that's Kendall that she's holding, their daughter Kayla, and their daughter Mason. Son Mason. Thank you all, I love you. Thanks for everything. In 1997, the late president, Doug Sweetland, offered me this position, and Karen's here. Karen, I appreciate you being here. You know how special Doug is and was to me. He told me three things as he offered me the job. He said, number one, uh, we've been a, we have a very good tradition here in NEIA, but we want to be competitive in Division II. And that's been your background. So that's the first criteria I'm asking, I'm going to evaluate on is how competitive we will be in the NCAA Division II. Secondly, he said, to accomplish this, I want you to make sure that we're using student athletes that we can be proud of on our campus, in our community, 24 7. That's the only kind of student athletes we want around here. And thirdly, he said that I'm going to give you, I'm going to allow you to do a lot of things. He said that you can be creative. Whatever, just remember at the end of the year, you must finish in the black. We will not accept any revenue that you're underneath. And so if you finish in the red, you're fired. Right, Doug? Exactly, okay. Not Doug Sweetland, okay. So, uh, then he said, Butch, get your rear end and gear and get out of here and go to work. Now, if you know Doug, he didn't necessarily say rear end, Karen. He used a different word, but uh, my grandchildren are here, so we'll just pretend it was rear end. Then along in 2001 comes President Danahar. What a tremendous hire for this institution. He helped me with uh, knowing uh, how to be better organized. Uh, he was very good on relationships, on establishing them and maintaining them. And uh, again, what his legacy, he's retiring now and after 10 years here, and we're standing in parts of his legacy, but his legacy speaks for itself. So I was just so fortunate to have leaders to allow me to become into this position. Once that was over, I thought, okay, I took a look at the athletic department and said, now what are we going to do? How are we going to do this? Looked around and I, I said, well, first of all, we've got to make sure that we become more aggressive in recruiting Division II student athletes. Secondly, we have to have more money in order to do this, so we must increase our revenue, and we have to do that by increasing attendance on our athletic events. And then finally, we need to establish a very strong partnership with the community. This is a tremendous community, and they've been supportive, but let's find a way for everybody to dig their heels and do it better if we possibly can. Thinking about that, I said, well, now where do I go? How do I do from here? Well, the only thing I know how to do is form a team. So let's form a team and get to work. First person I run into is Roly Muller. Uh, Roly, very honestly, you should be standing up here and receiving this award, not me, for everything that you've done. She was listed as an assistant athletic director. She should, she should have been a co-athletic director. Roly, I have to be careful when I finish talking to you because many times when I hang the phone up, I almost say, Roly, I love you. And uh, I know Lene understands that, but I have to be careful in my office because I know what Aaron's thinking over there. <laughs> Once we got through that, we went to the coaching staff and I looked at the coaching staff and I got a Hall of Famer on the volleyball coach, a Hall of Honor on the volleyball coach, Deb Dembeck. I have another one in wrestling, Mike Sterner. I've got one of the top 
Division II baseball, Division II baseball coaches in the state of Minnesota and Paul Blanchard, and we had a few holes that we had to fill. First one we filled was to hire Tim Miles and his staff that he brought in with Todd and uh, Kevin and the other people and, and the results of that are what's sitting over there and being honored today. That, he was, that was a great hire for our institution. We also hired a, a, to replace Deb when she left. We've got uh, Terry that came in here and, and took our volleyball position. I mean, it just goes on and on. Yes, yes, I did hire Kelly Loft. <laughs> And I constantly remind him of that until he reminds me what his starting salary was. <laughs> so we just drop it at that point. We looked at the support staff and we looked around and we had Bill Mosel in admissions who is currently a vice president, worked his way up. But more importantly, we have your current athletic director there, Chris Himaleski. He was a student, then he was a graduate student, then he worked in the admissions, he worked his way up, he was an assistant baseball coach. And very honestly, people, you are so fortunate to have him in the leadership role. If there is ever a bright, shining star in athletic administrator in the Northern Sun, it's Chris Himaliski. Chris, uh, congratulations. Okay, well, I, I saw, okay, I shouldn't forget Mike's Coffee Shop. Also, I had to have those meetings at Mike's. And we've got Mr. Mustang sitting there, Dave Drown, another Hall of Honor person. But every morning I started at Mike's Coffee Shop and I listened, I laughed, I got my marching orders, they told me what to do, what not to do. You know guys, uh, some of you are here today, I still use you a lot. Every morning that I get up and I've got to make a key decision, I look in the mirror before I shave and I said, now, what would Mike's Coffee Shop do? And then when I find out what they would do, then obviously I do the opposite because I know that's the right thing to get done, just like it was here. 2000, 2001 was when it all arrived. This is the year that Southwest Minnesota State hit Division II with a bang. We won championships in wrestling. We won championships in women's golf. We won championships in women's basketball. And we won championships in men's basketball, the team that's being honored today. Actually, in 2001, we also won a volleyball championship. Deb won. That was the following academic year, but it was still in 2001. It seems ironic, but it yet I feel so fortunate to be up here sharing this honor with that team. Because again, if there's a group that helped put me here, it would be that team of basketball players. Honest story, guys. Uh, when you won the region that year at, at St. Cloud State, uh, that championship night there, when, we went, when I went to the game, I had two special thoughts. First of all, I saw Aaron and her teammates sitting in the front row, and they had just lost a difficult game in the women's regional basketball tournament. But yet, here they were. After that game, they drove down here and sat there and supported the men's team. And I thought, you know, Southwest is a pretty neat place to believe when you got that kind of a family, which we did have. Secondly, uh, it was, uh, I was the chair of the region that year, and it was the fifth day that I had been in St. Cloud for that tournament, and I only brought two ties. And so it was the third game, and I, I didn't want to wear the same tie, so I asked Linnea to go out and buy me a tie for the championship game, which she did. And guys, this is the tie that she bought me. This is a tie that it's very special to me. I only wear it on special occasions. I have never lost anything when I wear this tie, so it only gets worn. It's a serious story. Uh, this has a lot of meaning to me. and. Uh, so just in your honor, uh, th that's how special this tie is to me. We went to the Elite Eight. I was the national chair of Division II men's basketball, the only national chair ever to have their own team participate. And what a neat feeling that was for me, how lucky that I've been. In closing, I would just like to say again, thank you, all of you, for, for allowing me to be a part of this day. Uh, again, I'm here because of the people that surrounded me while I'm here. And very honestly, I think that maybe the table should be turned that Butch and, and his family should be giving this award to Southwest Minnesota State. Thank you very much.